It's Mark from Whipple Training. Welcome to MacBreak Studio, Brooklyn Edition. I can't know. I <laughs> okay, okay. All right, so we're here in Brooklyn, and I've been out shooting on a beautiful fall weekend uh, with my iPhone 11, which I just picked up, and I can't believe the quality of the photos and videos on this thing. And I'm also using the DJI Osmo 3, which is super compact and easy to carry around and shoot with. So I've been really fun uh, shooting with that. And uh, let's get right into today's tip here on MacBreak Studio. So last week, Motion VFX released a new plugin for both Final Cut Pro 10 and Motion called M Puppet. And if you've ever used After Effects, you're going to know what this is right away because After Effects has a puppet tool and it's something that I've been wishing Motion had for many years now. So I'm very excited about this product. It's basically a mesh warp. And Stanislaw has made some really great tutorials, which you can view right here. I highly recommend you check these out. But let's jump in and play with it. Okay, here we are in Final Cut Pro. The first thing to know about M Puppet is that the object you apply it to needs to have transparency to work effectively. So my first example, I just have this little character that I downloaded from 123rf.com, a stock site plenty of stock sites, you can find characters like this. I opened it in the preview app and used the instant alpha to pull the alpha channel out very quickly. You can see there's still a little bit of background there, but as long as I put it on a light background, it should be fine. I've also dropped into my timeline a generator, just the custom generator. If we go over to titles and generators and go down to uh, solids, I use the custom one and set a color. So good to be in here because M Puppet is actually a generator in Final Cut and that's where you need to go to get it. So uh, I'll press X to set a range. There's two versions, one normal one or standard one, one with motion blur. I'll select the one without motion blur just for performance and press Q for connect edit. And there we go. So how it works is really simple. So command for the inspector and it's asking, hey, what do you want to use? So I'll click on the well and I'll go back to my library and select this guy and say apply clip. There he is. By default, it makes it kind of small, so I'm gonna scale that guy up in the inspector here. And then there are some simple controls, just four of them, and obvious directions. Click on the image that handles. Notice if I move my cursor over the object, it highlights to indicate it sees it, and this is the thing to affect. The default tool is to add handles. And I'll just add one right to his head by clicking. And right now it doesn't do anything. You need another handle for it to work. But let's say I put one down here at his neck and then click the one in the top. Uh, you can see I'm getting movement already because it basically creates a little mesh on him and allows you to uh, move these things. So let's keep going. I'll put one on his hand. It's good to have ones on the joints. And if I want to lock his feet down, I can put ones down here and maybe one at his midpoint. And then right away, anything I drag on will uh, basically warp this character. And you can see I can quickly and easily create some movement here. I'll add another one on his shoulder. And I'll add ones on his knees. Now, if I really wanted to lock his foot down, I could add another one here so that the entire foot stays on the ground. If you want to get rid of one of these handles, just click this little um, icon here, the next one over, and you can click to remove one. It's that simple. So you set up a few of these handles, and you can get rid of them. You can add them. It's very flexible here. And then we go into this Mesh A group. And you can choose the mesh density. If you want to see it, you can click this last icon right here, which will reveal the mesh. 
And depending on what you're trying to do, you might want to change how dense it is. So it's this is average by default. It can make a much looser mesh and that'll affect it differently than a very dense mesh where it will have a different impact. I'm just going to go back to average and then pop open handles. And I'll also turn off the mesh. So each handle has X and Y parameters as well as a depth parameter. We'll come back to that in a moment. And here's really all you have to do. I'll move my playhead to the start of this clip here. And I'm going to set keyframes for each of these handles just by clicking. And then I'll move somewhere in the middle. I can always change these later. Now anything I do will create animation. So for example, I can uh, you know, tilt his head to one side a little bit and I can just sort of play around and see what looks good, what looks interesting. And now if I scrub through that, I've got a little animation and it's nice and smooth and fluid. The other thing you can do, rather than animating single points, let me go back to that particular keyframe here, is if you select this tool, it'll allow you to select a bounding box to select multiple points at once. So I could select all of those and then drag them as a group to move them around. Um, I could also scale them and I can rotate them as a group. So by using this, you can really create some interesting additional animation on your character. And I'll play that through. And if I want to speed it up, I can just press Control V to reveal these um, keyframes. And I'll move that one over here, Control V again, and play that. So that's the basic idea. Want to know which handle does what? And kind of, it's easy to forget, but if you just mouse over, this will say handle number six. And I'm like, okay, handle number six. I know which one that is. I'll go back to the playhead here, and you could, um, you know, drag on it right here if you wanted to adjust it as well. But here's what I wanted to show you. If I take this one, for instance, and put it over here, notice how this leg is going in front of the other leg, and that's what the depth parameter is for. So if I drag that depth parameter, you'll see it moves behind or in front. So it's easy to control uh, parts of objects that cross over other parts of the object. And let's say you want to reset your character to its default position, but you don't want to get rid of your animation. Let's say I've animated it like this, and I want him to go back to his default position by here. If I click this reset handles button, it looks dangerous. You might think it's going to blow away your keyframes, but it won't. In fact, let's press control V so we can see our keyframes. I click that and I'll get a dialogue. Uh, do you want to remove the handles animation and reset the position? So if I chose yes, it would delete all my keyframes and just reset the guy. But the default is no. If I click that, it will go back to its default setup and leave my keyframes in place. So now let's actually set our view quality to a better quality and set a better performance. And now if I play through, we've got that animation, but it will go back to his original standing position. So an easy way to reset a character, which really comes in handy if you're working with photographs, which we'll take a look at now. So the trick really in getting the most out of M object, like many things in life, is preparation. And here I have a photograph and I wanted to animate Christine separate from the background. So um, I cut her out and I'll have to do a separate tutorial to talk about cutting objects out from the background. It's more than I can cover here. But I just want to show you I've, I've isolated her from the background by cutting her out, duplicating, and going with a pen tool around the whole thing. And then the problem though is if I'm going to move her, uh, I need to fill in where I've cut her out. And this particular shot is extremely difficult because it's not a plain background. I would need to clone in wherever she moves, it's going to reveal transparency unless I clone the background in, and this is way too complicated. So in this case, I probably would separate her from the background and put her somewhere else, but the lighting is very specific here. This is a shot late at night uh, in New York City. So just for fun, what I did is, is throw her into this background here and animate her as well as animating the background with a quick Ken Burns effect. So you get a sense of what it looks like. Of course, the lighting doesn't match perfectly, but it's an option for animating a photograph with MPubbit. And there you can see the points that I've chosen. 
And the thing that you need to be a little bit careful about, when you move a human being, you can start to create distortion that might be fun on a little character, but with a human being, you have to be a little careful about creating something that doesn't look, you know, a little bit crazy. But if you do very modest movement, you can create something that just adds a little bit of um, dynamism, as they say on the uh, Motion VFX website. It's actually a good word for it, to um, a photograph especially when you combine it with some additional movement. So kind of fun way to, to animate a photograph. But I wanted to do something where I was able to isolate the character from the background or photograph in the background uh, and still show that background. But I needed some help. And where was I gonna find that help? In Brooklyn. Alex Goldner. Alex has been involved with motion back from the beginning, Final Cut Pro, great guy, developer, lives in the UK. I live in the Bay Area. We both happened to be in the New York area at the same time and managed to get together in Brooklyn, had a nice chat, and then he was a great sport and willing to help me do a little shoot so we had something that we had experimented with animating with M Puppet. We found an interesting background and took turns jumping in front of it, recording with the iPhone in the slow motion setting in order to be able to pick a good frame to use to cut out to use with M Puppet. We made sure to include a shot of the wall without either of us in there so we had a good clean plate to work with. Then on the plane ride home, I cut each of us out of that background in Photoshop. Note you could also do this in Affinity Photo or Pixelmator or other graphics applications. I then took those individual cutout elements and dropped them into M Puppet using both our background plate and played around with some other backgrounds as well. So we're just scratching the surface here. I'll be back with more about M Puppet, including working with titles in Final Cut and creating a variety of different animations using motion. So if you guys don't know Alex, you need to know Alex4D, and it's alex4d.com, right? It's still yours. Yes. Yes, Alex4d.com, great uh, plugins for Final Cut Pro. Very, very good to see you. Thank you. Hope you guys liked that. Check us out at rippletraining.com. Subscribe below, and thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.